Hey Ashtangis, so today I decided that I wanted to do a very basic video on the most or one of the most common poses in yoga and especially Ashtanga yoga, which is downward facing dog. Um, Adho Mukha Shavasana. I'm not very good with the Sanskrit, it's not my MO to use it. But I wanted to break it down today because um, in Ashtanga we do a lot of downward facing dogs. Um, and really and truly, it should be a resting pose. It shouldn't be something that we have to struggle in. And the further that you go in the sequence and the more that you practice, the more you want to rely on your downward facing dog as a resting pose. Um, I think it's really important also to note that if we can find the seat of this pose, we better off. For me personally, it seems like every teacher has their own kind of way to express how this pose should be done. And I've done my best to entertain a lot of different teachers and a lot of their formats. And I can tell you right now that I have settled on my favorite downward dog here. Um, it actually resembles what um, my girlfriend calls the 13-year-old the Indian boy downward facing dog. It's not a westernized downward dog. I think to the naked eye, it looks almost a little bit sloppy. It might look a little bit um, unkempt, so to speak, right? Because we're not doing it for looks, we're doing it for ease. So when I teach downward dog, it's really important that first and foremost, we look at what the root of the pose should be. And the root is always where the majority of your weight is gonna be. In this case, you would want it to be in your feet. So if your heels are not on the ground, you wanna walk in as much as you possibly can so you can get your heels on the ground because we can't bear weight in our legs and our feet if they're not grounded. So that's like the first thing to note. Most of us, especially if we've done a lot of Western yoga, we tend to do a narrow downward dog. And I like to do a wider downward dog because the wider the base, the easier it is to distribute the weight. If it's too narrow, then we're kind of balancing more linear and if we can widen it then we can spread out the distribution better and again making it easier for um, us to rest in. So just to demonstrate for example it seems to be the case that when we do our downward facing dogs there's a lot of weight resting forward the feet might be up and we have a tendency to focus a lot on the shoulders and the arms okay um, but again, the problem with this is that um, if we, especially as founder practitioners, if a lot of our weight is forward in our downward dog, then we're going to wear out the upper body in the course of the practice pretty easily. So it's important to take as much weight out of the upper body as we possibly can. Um, so instead of the, the downward facing dog kind of looking like this, walk your feet in and spread your feet between themselves a little bit more and then shift the weight back. So instead of being forward, where we're kind of dangling in the air, now we're finding the earth and we're shifting our weight back. People who have, um, people who have wrist issues can really get on board with this. Um, example because again if we take the weight out of the upper body then we're not putting as much pressure on the structure um, from the waist up we really want to have the weight in the lower body excuse me <coughs> so as we go to shift and transition there's a resting point you always want to find that resting point in downward dog Otherwise, Ashtanga can become a very um, hard upper body practice exclusively. So, make sure that you're really planting your heels back and down. I had a student once ask me, you know, well, is my back flat? Um, I don't know and I don't care. One of my teachers from the past Chuck Miller said that you always want to work from the ground up, and I agree with him. It's really hard to find a connection if we're floating in midair. In a downward dog where 
you know, our feet are not grounded, we can't find connection, and the majority of our weight is in the, the upper part of our frame, it makes it very difficult to find a, a point of reference and to move from. So, I really like this downward dog. Like you do kind of look like a 13-year-old Indian boy, especially if you shift your, your hips up, if you do the anterior tilt with the pelvis. Um, but that helps to really set the weight even more back into the legs and the feet. So, um, and maybe you're not tired enough yet. Maybe you, you haven't hit a point in your practice yet where you're really just tired of relying on your upper body. But that time will come, and if you're looking for a way to change it, I was, I was well into, to, I actually I finished third series when I, when I decided to change my downward dog. And um, I don't know that I'll ever change back. The more ease I can find in my practice, I think the better. So I hope that this video was helpful. And um, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to message me. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I, I never ask people, I tend to forget, but it's just my name, Paige Elizabeth, for more information on different poses and then other discussions in regards to the practice, you can find me on YouTube. So have a great day, guys. Bye.